What's up guys and welcome to the video on probabilities, combinations, grouping, ordering, and counting. Let's get into it. So first let's start off with the concept of probability. So how do we define probability or what do we mean when we're asking for the probability of something? We're asking the likelihood of a certain outcome. So let's take an example. So if I ask, what is the probability of rolling a two on a dice? So the way we look at that is we want to know the likelihood of rolling a two. And the way we break that down is we first look at what is the total number of ways that we can get what we want. Meaning what is the total number of ways that we can roll a, a two over the total universe of all the potential outcomes that exist and that gives us our probability. So let's look at the ways that you can roll a two. There's actually only one way and that's by actually rolling a two. So there's our example of the total ways to roll a two. And what are the total universe of outcomes? We have, you can roll a one, you can roll a two, and notice we're counting even what we, even though it's our wanted outcome, we have to count it again because it's part of the total universe of outcomes. We can roll a three, a four, and a five, and of course a six. So if we look at what we want over the total universe, we get one over six. So the probability of rolling a two on a dice is one six. Now let's talk about the probability of independent events. So first of all, what is an independent event or what are independent events? Independent are events are events that do not affect each other. So if we're trying to measure the probability of two events that have no bearing on each other, they are then independent events. So let me give an example. So we, or actually before the example, the way you calculate it is you literally multiply the probability of each of these independent events to get the probability of both of these events occurring. So I'll give you an example. We're gonna go back to the dice example. So let's say I wanna know what is the probability of rolling a, a two, two times in a row, okay? So first, let's think about and remember, rolling a two on the first roll, it has no effect, it has no bearing on whether or not you'll roll a two on the second roll. So all we do is we calculate the probability of each of these events and we multiply them together. So what is the probability of rolling a two on the first dice? It is simply one out of six, okay? And what is the probability of rolling a two the second time? It's again, one out of six. So the probability of rolling a two, two times in a row, all we have to do is multiply these two probabilities. So it's one sixth times one sixth, which gives us a probability of one out of 36. Now let's talk about calculating the probability of dependent events. So first of all, what are dependent events? Unlike independent events, they are events that actually affect each other. So one event occurring will affect the outcome of the next or event, affect the probability of the subsequent event. So let me give you an example of two dependent events. So let's say I was asking, what is the probability of drawing two jacks in a row out of a single deck of cards? Okay, so we've got 52 cards in the deck. So let's take the first event. And the first event, we wanna draw a single jack. So how many, and by the way, by drawing this first card, you realize we're taking a card away from the deck. So it goes down from 52 to 51. But so what is that first probability? Well, there are four jacks total. So that is our top number out of 52 cards in total. So to draw a jack the first time, it's simply four out of 52 or one out of 13. Okay, now let's calculate the probability of drawing a jack on the second draw. But now we only have 51 cards and there is one jack gone. So we've only got three jacks left. So the probability of the second time is three out of 51. But again, like with the probability for independent events, we simply multiply these together to get the probability of drawing two jacks in a row from a random deck. So that gives us three over 663, which of course reduces to one over 221. 
Now let's talk about permutations. So what are permutations? Permutations is the total number of ways to order a group of objects. So I'm gonna show you how to calculate permutations by giving you an example. So let's say we have six horses in a horse race and we want to know what are all the different ways that these horses could finish, right? So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F. So what are all the different variations? Like could we have A, B, C, D, E, F? Could we have A, B, C, F, E, D, so on and so forth, and how many permutations exist. So it's a very simple formula. You simply take the number of objects or items, or in this case, horses, factorial. So that is like an exclamation mark that you see here. Well, what does factorial mean? So factorial, it's not too complicated. You just basically multiply down the line of subsequent numbers all the way to one. So for example, six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one. So in this case, six factorial would be 720, meaning that there are 720 ways, believe it or not, to organize these six horses from first through six. Now we're gonna take a slightly different example of permutations, and it's gonna be from the same horse example, but with a slight modification. So let's say again, we've got our six horses, A through F, but we want to know now, what are the total unique ways that we could have the first through third place finish with six horses all together competing for first through third? So this is a slightly different problem, and this means that we don't care about fourth, fifth, and sixth, so now, we have a particular formula that you wanna write down and try to remember. And it's simply n factorial over n minus r factorial. So n factorial, n is the total number of objects, or in this case, horses. And we have n minus r factorial. r is simply the number of positions, or horses in this case, that we are choosing. So if we go ahead and plug in the numbers, we get six factorial over six minus three factorial and that gives us the total number of permutations for first through third and if we go ahead and do the math we have six factorial on top so six times five times four times three times two times one over three factorial in the denominator which is three times two times one now you see we have the same numbers on the top and the bottom so we can go ahead and cross off three two one and that leaves us with six times five times four which gives us 120 different permutations now let's talk about combinations so combinations is the total number of ways to group a set of objects and in this case we don't care about the order of these objects. So what does that mean? That means there should be fewer combinations than permutations because when we care about order, one, two, three, and three, two, one, and two, one, three, these are all different permutations. But we're talking about grouping, it's the same group because we don't care about order and they all contain one, two, and three, it doesn't matter. So there's going to always be a fewer number of combinations possible than permutations. So let's take the example of the same thing where we're trying to group three out of these six horses. So what are all the different possible ways that we can group three of these, three of, out of this total six horses, A, B, C, D, E, F? So there's another formula that you need to be aware of, and it is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Okay, so again, n is the total number and r is the number we are choosing. So if we go ahead and plug in the values here, we get six factorial over six minus three factorial times three factorial. So let's go ahead and work these numbers out and we get the same thing on the numerator. On the denominator, we get three times two times one times three times two times one. We go ahead and cross off the same terms in the top and bottom and we end up with 120 over six, which gives us a total, excuse me, of 20 combinations. Finally, let's talk about counting. And this one, with counting problems, you're just going to be asked to count the number of steps required, count the number of operations required, and it can really run the gamut. I'm just going to run through a particular example to give you an idea of a particular counting strategy or counting uh, problem. 
So let's say we have four letters. We have D, A, C, B organized in this particular way. And I tell you that I want you to eventually organize them as A, B, C, D. And there's a two rules that you need to follow. So the first rule is you can only switch two adjacent letters. The second rule is you can switch the entire order, the entire order of the chain if you want to. And that counts as one move. And you want to be able to get it from the original starting position to A, B, C, D in the fewest moves possible. And then I ask, of course, what is that number of moves? So let's take a look. So we've got D, A, C, B. And so the way we just got to look at it and see what is the fastest way to do this. Now, the first thing that you should notice is you've got a D on the very left side that has to get all the way to the right. So in this case, it makes a lot of sense just from the standpoint of the D to go ahead and flip the order of the entire character string right off the bat. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we're going to get B, C, A, D. So that D, which otherwise would have taken three different moves to get over there, we've done that in one move. Now, the next move, we're gonna look at those two middle values, A and C, and we're gonna switch those because that immediately locks C into place. So that's another part of this entire puzzle that's complete. And if you see now, all we have to do for our final move is switch B and A, and that gives us our ending string of A, B, C, D, and we are done in just three moves. That's all for the video on probabilities, combinations, grouping, ordering, and counting. Let's get into some practice problems.